You know, technically, shooting infantry with a rifle this caliber is a war crime. So if anyone asks, just say you were aiming at something else. This time, we're covering the Kraber AP Sniper. Large caliber rifles have long been used in anti-material roles, designed to tackle enemy equipment from afar instead of directly against infantry. They often fire armor-piercing rounds, which makes them effective against light vehicles. And an explosive or incendiary core seals the deal for enemies hiding behind cover. The Kraber fires a 145 by 114 mm round, a whopping 57 caliber bullet. The round spec dates back to the 20th century Soviet Union, although the modern variant takes advantage of newer materials. Despite its large caliber, the Kraber is designed to be lightweight where it can. Its skeleton stock and composite foregrip cut kilos off a soldier's load. This makes it surprisingly portable, and a lone pilot can manage it as well as any other rifle. You can even fire it one-handed, albeit not particularly accurately. The Kraber's damage is absolutely unparalleled. Enemy pilots will succumb to a single hit to any part of the body at any range. In fact, the Kraber can kill them twice over. So what's the catch? Well, you're going to have to lead your targets. The large, heavy projectile travels much slower than the typical rounds you might be used to. Against static opponents, you can place your crosshairs directly on target. But for moving targets, you'll need to aim ahead of them. And the longer the shot, the greater the adjustment needed. Versus Titans, you'll deal more per shot damage than any other weapon. Although it's not ideal for the task due to a slower rate of fire and shallow magazine. At a distance, however, it can be worth shooting for an unshielded Titan's weak spots. You'll deal critical damage that can finish off a weaker chassis. While the Kravis projectile does require significant travel time to reach distant targets, there is no damage drop-off once it arrives. You'll deal the same massive damage over all combat ranges. Recoil is heavy on a per-shot basis, but not a factor at all in terms of your shot accuracy. As a bolt-action weapon, your rate of fire is much too slow for the kick to perturb any subsequent shot. It's important to make shots count with the Kraber then. With its achingly slow rate of fire set at a maximum of 111 rounds per minute, misses will open a large window for enemy reprisal. Hipfire is particularly unreliable. With the widest spread of any available weapon, unaimed fire should be nothing but a last resort. But the one-shot power does mean you can expect a reliable kill, should you land a lucky shot. Magazine capacity is limited, but the slow output means even five rounds will last you a short while. In any case, reloads are tolerable enough, taking 2.5 seconds for a tactical reload, and up to 3.61 seconds when empty. Nimbleness is not the Kraber's strongest suit, to be honest. It's a bulky weapon beset by cumbersome handling. You aim down your scope in a glacial 450 milliseconds, slower than any other weapon and greatly limiting your potential reactivity. Switch times are pretty average to boot, and your mobility is aligned with the lower tier of weapons and 95% of the base speed. The Kraber is a very powerful weapon that works best when fired accurately. Contrary to typical expectations of a sniper rifle, it's perhaps best to avoid combat at extremely long ranges. You'll struggle to hit anything on the move. Instead, your build should help support the use of the weapon closer to the fight, leveraging the weapon's ability to shut down opponents in a single blow. As with a longbow, there's no eye in sight to speak of, with the weapon coming equipped with a telescopic sight. The long-range 6x scope is the default, providing a narrow but clear view on distant targets. It is the most capable way to tackle long-distance engagements with the weapon, but it does leave you blinkered while aiming, which can harm your close-range ability. Slightly more versatile is the 4.5x zoom scope, which will give you a slightly wider field of view when aiming. This makes it better suited to mid-range combat, as you can observe a wider area while still being able to place shots with precision. The AOG offers the lowest magnification at 24 times, and you'll retain your peripheral vision so you can keep an eye on your surroundings. 
Overall then, the AOG might be the wisest choice. While the Kraber is an immensely powerful weapon at any distance, the slower travel time means it is easier to land shots against moving targets at a close to mid-range, and the low zoom option gives you greater flexibility in this regard. For your mods, there are three choices. Two good, and one less than beneficial. First, the extended mags will slightly increase your capacity between reloads, granting six rounds instead of five. This is a pretty paltry effect with just a single extra round, but does nonetheless mean you can remain on station slightly longer. The stabilizer steadies your scope slightly, making long range shots easier and generally improving the weapon's handling all round. While scope sway isn't necessarily a huge factor, accuracy is paramount with the Kraber, so any improvement on this front, even if slight, is welcome. Finally, there's the suppressor. You think the Kraber's generous potency would remain effective even when silenced, but you'd be wrong. Damage is reduced just enough to warrant a two-shot kill on an uninjured opponent, meaning short of a headshot, you'll generally need to land two successive shots, which is no mean feat given the rate of fire. You're welcome to try it out out of morbid curiosity, but no sane pilot would equip a silent Kraber by choice. Also of note is the amped version of the Kraber. It offers a unique mod that injects an explosive twist to your already devastating shots. As well as coming equipped with a 4.5x magnification scope, you also get the benefit of explosive rounds. While conventional damage remains the same, you'll also reap the benefit of splash damage, potentially finishing off weaker enemies caught within the blast radius. Overall, I'd elect the stabilizer. Its steadying effect offers continuous benefit over the more situational extended mags. As for the rest of your build, there's not much you can do to correct shoddy marksmanship, so you're on your own there. What you can do, however, is fill in the gaps. Your ordnance and secondary can help to provide a protective layer to enhance survival rates in close quarters. Your sidearm is essential then, and be sure to switch to it whenever an enemy pilot presses too close. At least after trying your luck with a single hip-fired shot. Beyond this, consider the arc mines to lay traps for potential aggressors, and to ward off titans treading too close to your position. Consider equipping the explosives pack for an extra mine, particularly if you're making liberal use. You'll be able to leave an extra electric surprise for those who would assault your position. The Kraber performs very well against static targets at extreme ranges. There's nothing better for shutting out an enemy sniper. Unfortunately, most enemy pilots you'll encounter will be on the move, and it's effectively impossible to land a shot on non-predictable movement at longer ranges. For this reason, an aggressive approach can pay dividends, so staying mobile and occupying good firing positions close to objectives can help to exert a powerful advantage. Be careful though, as the Kraber isn't easy to wrangle against an aware opponent bearing down on you. Your slow rate of fire and need for accuracy means getting too close can be a dangerous game. Really the key is in finding your own balance between the extremes of aggression and marksmanship. One is fraught with risk, and the other frustration. The Kraber is far and away the most powerful pilot weapon available, and is capable of killing any infantry at any range with a single shot every time. Unfortunately, the weapon's projectile is slow, meaning landing shots on a distant or moving target is much more challenging, limiting your performance. You can improve your odds by getting closer to your opponent, but doing so is risky due to the Kraber's slow handling times. Still, despite these downsides, there's no compromise in stopping power, and the Kraber will never leave an injured opponent in its wake. It might be tough to handle as a result, but with great power comes high volatility. Sadly, that brings us to the end of this series. It seems I'm needed elsewhere. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you out on the frontier, pilot.